Now, this is the method of how we evaluate the Excel load capacity of the pulse. You can see that there are three main methods. Uh, first, by load test. Okay, you can actually test every pulse, but not for ball pulse. All right. You can also design it according based on the load test, soil test, or what we call a static method, which we are going covering today, mainly covering today. Of course, we also can uh, evaluate through the power driving formula, which is all the PDA, that kind of stuff. So we have this soil test result. We have the soil property, which you get the lab test. You also have the in-situ test, whereby we use SPT or CPT to estimate the capacity, okay? Don't worry that you don't, you, you don't need to worry about memorizing all these things. We will go through slowly, okay? Now, this one is what you learn in school, okay? In school, you learn cohesive soils, that means it's clay, and cohesionless soil, which is sand. Then for different soil type, there's a different formula, okay? Whether if you use the, for the clay, you have two methods. You can either use the total stress method, which is a undrained shear strength method, uh, which is the alpha CU. You also can use the effective stress method, which is the beta uh, times the effective stress, okay? Now, how do you obtain OCR, over consolidation ratio? Uh? Hey, this one, uh, for, to, in this seminar, there's a few PE and many senior design engineers I know. Okay, you should know by now what is OCR. But there are also many students out there and maybe some site engineer who don't know what is OCR. Okay, OCR is an over consolidation ratio. You need to do a, a consolidation test in the laboratory, then you can know the OCR. That is the standard method. Okay. So what is, okay, there are also some LTA stuff with, with us here. LTA, civil design criteria requirement, is you need to check both methods. And whichever give you the most onerous result should be used. Okay, huh? I can tell you, huh, many people who do LTA project actually didn't know this. They, they didn't know this. Also, they never follow this thing. Now, cohesionless so sand, soil means it's sand. We also, also use the effective stress method. Okay, but we also use the friction angle of the uh, of the soil to estimate the friction. Now, if you notice the ball power, the end bearing here, the end bearing capacity can vary from two to eleven megapascal, which is quite a lot, right? It's almost five times different. Why is that so? There are also some powering contractor here. I think in this group. Actually, I want them to answer, but I think I cannot, I don't know how to pinpoint you to find so many people to, 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 to look for you to answer. So let me answer for you. Because in a pure sand condition, the base is not easily to be cleaned properly. We normally have some soft deposit causing the end bearing to be very small. So it really depends on the workmanship. Okay, you must understand this thing. Geotechnical design is not like structural design. Okay, a lot of times we are dealing with conditions that we cannot see, okay? And we cannot also control while design. We can only consider in the design, but we cannot control during the design. Okay, so this is what I'm trying to say. So you need to consider the workmanship into your design. Okay, so later I'll bring you through this, this what I mean just now, okay? Now, why you ask? So, you say most of the soils are do not behave like pure clay or sand. So, to all those students who have just graduated or you are still in the final year, you can see that you, even though you learn in your school, but in actual fact, you don't deal with pure clay or sand. Usually, they are sandy clay, silty clay, or clay sand, that kind of stuff. Okay? And so, most of the project, you do not have adequate lab test result. You see, out of this whole ball lock, they only do one test. And you can you use this one test to apply throughout the whole soil layer? I think you cannot, right? But what is the reason besides 
a cost concern. Is it because they don't want to spend the money to do a test? Sometimes it's not true. Sometimes there are also some SI contractor inside this group. Huh? And we notice that actually it's because if you know enough of soil investigation, which you should know if you want to do geotechnical works, huh? that sometimes you cannot get good lab test result or you cannot even get good samples in very hard soil where your power are supposed to be embedded to. Okay, so that brings us to why we rely on in situ tests. In situ tests for those students, uh, for those students, means we don't bring back to the lab to do, we do it on site. And the most common test all around the world is using the SPT uh, or you call it a standard penetration test and using the SPT M glow count to estimate whatever fiction or other parameters that we use. You can use it to estimate CU, you can use it to estimate your friction angle. Then you can go and apply directly to the alpha CU method or the beta gamma prime method. But you see our local data, our friction varies between 2 to 3 N. Why is 2 to 3 N? Then how do we correlate the M bearing to the N? Okay, so this is an alpha method that I use, for example, uh, you can see CU usually is between 5 to 6N. And you will look at the Tazaki and Tax chart for the this correction factor, you will notice that actually the C, we will not stop the power in when the CU is less than 200 kPa, for example. Usually the CU will be at least 300 and, and, and above. So the alpha value is quite constant around 0.35 or 0.36, that kind of stuff. So you estimate, if you plug into the formula as I show you here, it will be between 1.75 to 2.1 N for the friction. If the M bearing will be 9 CU, which is between 45 to 54 N. So this is the most common PAL design used in Singapore. Okay, we always use SPT N to estimate the friction and the M bearing, okay? Now, talk a little bit about the rock socketed piles. Huh? Rock socketed piles, like name imply, it means the lower part of the piles is socketed into the rock. Now, rock socketed pile is a whole big chunk of uh, uh, study itself. But I just want to share with you what is commonly how we do. Because take note that we are still doing a preliminary design. Okay? So, for friction, we use 0.2 to 0.3 multiplied by the square root of the unconfined compressive strength of the rock. Now you must understand what is unconfined compressive strength. Huh? This is also a lab test carried out on the rock sample. Okay, this is for the benefit of doubt for the students. Huh? Now for base resistance, Chang and Einstein in 1998 say that the QB, the M bearing is about in with a mean between 4.8 to the square root of the Unconfined compressive strength. Now, can the QB be greater than the concrete strength? Think through this question. Uh, think through why, why I ask this question. Okay, because sometimes the rock uh, is harder than your concrete. In some instances, in some location of Singapore, the rock can be harder than your concrete. Meaning to say, your power cannot punch through the rock. Okay, the moment the load is so high, your concrete will crack first before it can punch through the rock. Okay? Now, some of you are familiar, more familiar to CP4. Now, we are going to EC7 now. Now, just for those people who still cannot convert themselves, I just, you just need to change the lingo. Okay, what do you mean by the lingo? So, these are the common lingo in CP4, allowable load or we call fact, unfactor load. Then we call the factor load. Of course, we use load and capacity very common. We use ultimate load and working load. We use ultimate capacity and allowable capacity. But in EC7, this is a corresponding uh, definition or lingo that we use. Okay, allowable become characteristic, factor become design, load become action, capacity become resistant. Once you get used to this lingo, I think it's quite easy. But if you notice, the approach is CP4 
is a allowable stress approach. We always talk about allowable load, working load. Okay. That in EC7, we always talk about design action uh, must be smaller than the design resistance, which is the ultimate stress approach. Okay. So which resistance is higher? RD or RK? If you see K, always remember it's characteristic. If you see D means design. In this case, the characteristic resistance is higher than the design resistance. Why? Because you're supposed to factor down the characteristic resistance. Okay? Now, EC7 uh, and CB4, this is a good comparison table prepared by one of the seminars uh, when we trying to migrate to EC7. So, BCA have their own uh, requirements on what is the SI required. Okay, to be frank, this is for those more than 30 stories. For less than 30 stories, for nine, limit to 10 stories, there is a, 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 a skill down requirement. But I think this is generally a good practice and it's adequate. So EC7 never say about the, the numbers, okay? They only talk about the debt and uh, mainly the debt. Okay, how deep the problem must the soil investigation must go? Okay, for those soil investigation company and powering company, uh, you have to take note of this very, very carefully before you go to a legal case. Okay, with the development.